eight acre field that we're, we're just moving into next year. So we kind of did all the things that we talked about where we had a um, cover crop of Sudex that was growing in it, Sudex and cowpeas uh, that were growing in here all during the year, mowed them a couple times, um, and then just did our final mowing. And this section of the field, um, I planted cowpeas into moisture after our last rain, uh, which was two months ago. Three days after that last rain, I planted the cowpeas into this field and about 15% of the cowpeas came up. Um, and then it didn't, and then it stopped raining. So I had all these cowpea seeds sitting out here and if they didn't germinate, if they don't germinate before it gets cold, then they're gonna germinate next year when I'm trying to grow vegetables in it. So it's gonna be a horrible weed. And this is the, one of the steepest areas of the field. This is about a two and a half percent slope here. And I didn't want this to be bare all winter long. So I just planted um, cereal rye and crimson clover here. So I'm abandoning this as an early spring area. And we're gonna do rye and, and clover as a cover crop that'll grow all through the winter and then we'll no-till this. But I need to get all those cowpea seeds to germinate before it gets too cold because otherwise they're gonna be a weed and the no-till. Yeah. So I'm trying to irrigate this to get those to germinate and also the rye grass will come up early. So it seems like you like cereal rye and red clover as a winter cover for later spring or summer production areas. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend uh, somebody planting a cover if they're a little further south maybe now or maybe back up a little a little earlier in the summer uh, than than right now what would you recommend for somebody wanting to go into an early spring yeah planting? so early spring planting you don't want the key with early spring is you don't want any um, fresh decomposing organic matter right for cover cropping because okay. then you're going to attract um, uh, cabbage maggots which will just devastate your crops but you want your soil to be covered during the winter time so you don't have any erosion and you right. want the benefits of cover cropping. So for that, I usually plant um, uh, cowpeas. Uh, you can do cowpeas and sudex or cowpeas alone or cowpeas and millet. And then I like to do that about uh, the third week of August. And that will grow and then winter kill. Cold will kill it. And then um, the residue will be there on the surface all through the winter time, slowly decomposing and then come spring, almost fully decomposed and you're ready to go just do like one pass right, with the in. cultivation equipment real shallow you don't even have to do tillage a lot of times just cultivate and then plant you're ready to go all right no worries with the, the cabbage maggots so that was going to be here and you can see the cow peas but now yeah. um yeah so i just to back that up i planted over there um on the other side where it's not as steep i planted um, millet that can germinate with slightly cooler temperatures and hope, hopefully that will germinate when it rains and give me a little bit of cover before we head into winter. And there's also a lot more residue over there because this, to get this prepped for the early spring stuff, I had to mow and till this a lot sooner than I did the rest of the field. Mm -hmm. So this block I kind of took out of, out of the cowpea seedex cover crop a lot earlier. Um, so there's not as much residue here, but if we, we can walk down there and you can see the residue from. Sean, why do you plant cover crops into raised beds and not just into the ground? So the cover crops and raised beds, they perform a lot better. Uh, when I've done side-by-side -side comparisons, the raised bed cover crops are usually, they mature earlier and they're usually taller, thicker, denser than the ones that are grown on flat ground. Um, I think it has to do with, you know, the soil heating up more as well as the better drainage. Uh, and then that also allows you to get into the field earlier in the springtime because the tops of the raised beds will be drier. So in worst case scenario, it's too wet to get into the field, but you can still rototill the very tops of the raised beds really shallowly and um, get into the fields and, and, and till in your cover crop or, or plant um, or prep your beds if you're doing a tillage operation. And if you're doing no-till, moisture isn't that important, um, but you're usually no-tilling later in the year. So usually it happens at a time when you don't have to worry about the field being too wet. But yeah, this is lots of residue. It's really cellulosic, so the sudex lasts a long time in the soil. Yeah. It's my favorite. So you're hoping to plant in here into the spring? Um, yeah, this is going to be our early spring field. So this has millet planted in it right now. Ideally, the millet will grow up and then winter kill before it goes to seed. And then um, normally I do it with cowpeas, but um, with the lack of rain we've had this year, 
I'm worried that the cow, we're gonna head into a time period where it'll be too cold for the cow peas to germinate. The millet can germinate at a slightly lower temperature than the cow peas. So hopefully we'll still get some cover crop growth. I don't like to be, I don't want the soil to be bare all winter long. It's the main thing, so gotta get some cover on here as best we can. But these beds are sloped at about 0.7%. Uh, I like to keep the beds less than a 1% slope and that prevents erosion during the rain. But the field's designed with the roads on the ridges, so the roads always stay dry around the roads. And then, um, and then you kind of slope the beds off of that. I know that you all did a lot of um, uh, contour design and work when, when you started to lay out and design the farm. Can you kind of explain, you know, along with the, the roads being on the ridges, Mm -hmm. How did you decide how this field was going to be laid out based on that? Was it so that your beds were angled with the least amount of drop or...? Exactly, yeah. Um, I, ideally it's a quarter percent slope, but you know, I want it less than one percent slope. Right. Which happened, we just happenstance, it was like a 0.7 percent slope to just follow the ridge right here. And then there was a low point, uh, if you look at the contour map, I studied the contour map quite a bit. Got a one foot contour map for the site before we, uh, as we were designing the field. And there's like a low point in the middle there. So I have a vegetated waterway. We can walk down there and look at that. But there's a veg, turn that into a vegetated waterway. So as the beds slope to that low point, it's gonna be permanently vegetated with um, fescue. And the water will head there and then flow downhill from there. But that fescue will just prevent the, the soil from washing away. Washing out of the field entirely. Mm -hmm. Exactly because there's going to be a lot of water accumulating as it comes down to the end there. The bed. And then there's going to be a lot of volume heading downhill from that point. Mm -hmm. So you can look at it. This over here, which is rye and clover, will be the latest stuff. So kind of have like three different zones. So early spring, late spring, mm -hmm. probably early summer. Mm -hmm. How do you handle just the clover? The same way as... Yeah, the clover, um, this'll, this won't be... You could, you could no-tilt clover. And you can probably no-till a little earlier than the rye grass, um, cereal rye. But um, this will probably be, you know, tilled production. Unless it's really weed-free, then I might um, do a combination of till and no-till on the So how would you clover. how would you no-till the clover to um, get just, it ready for planting? Just with the roller, roller crimper. crimper. Yep, you can roller crimp. The, roller crimp the clover. clover. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't, if you need to till the clover, I mean, just mowing it almost kills it. So it's really easy. Yeah. Much, much harder to turn the rye grass in. And it'll, since it's just really high in nitrogen, it kind of disappears really quickly. It doesn't provide the carbon and the biomass that the, the cereal rye does, but mm -hmm. it'll give us the nitrogen and the cover. So you said you're going to plant perennial grass in here to yeah, absorb this, moisture? This all has fescue planted in it. So this area where it's not very steep as the vegetated waterway um, slopes down. I needed to drain these beds, so I put in this ditch and crowned, the, crowned it. Um, so this will actually be an access road too, but we'll try not to drive on it very much. 